So we will give it just a couple of minutes while people are still signing in and then we'll get started. Hi there, we're just waiting for a couple more to sign in and then we'll get started. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Um, you will note that you have a little control panel over on the right and you can e either uh, unmute yourself or you can type a question in and I will be happy to answer it. This particular event today is we call a coffee chat and um, hopefully you're having something stronger than coffee this time of evening. Um, but uh, I'm happy to, I'm here just to answer your questions. I'll talk a little bit about BASIS Austin Primary, um, and then we will um, take any questions you have. All right, my name is Rosalind Thompson. I will be the head of school at BASIS Austin Primary. Um, I have uh, about seven and a half years with BASIS. Uh, this will be my fifth school, fourth school in, in that period of time. I started out with BASIS um, and helped open the first school in San Antonio um, and then have moved from San Antonio to Arizona to New York um, to and, and uh, back to Arizona and now back to Texas. So um, please be sure to put your questions in the question box and I will be happy to answer them. Um, and I am going to turn my camera on. Well, I'm trying, there we go. Okay, um, so that you can see me, I can't see you. And again, you can either um, put a question in the question box or you can unmute yourself there and um, just interrupt me. Uh, so um, the first question that we've got, thank you, Amanda, or what are the class sizes estimated to be uh, this year? Are there any plans in place if um, COVID-19 is a problem this fall? So yes. Um, we are looking at our normal size classes, which is about 30 kids in a class with two teachers. Um, so from kindergarten through fourth grade, we have two teachers in every classroom. It's a co-teaching model that we are very proud of and that works very well for us. So 
our kindergarten classes might be a bit smaller because the space that we are renting, um, the kindergarten classrooms, a couple of them are a little bit smaller, but we'll be somewhere in, in the range of 25 to 30 kids. Um, and, and in terms of plans for COVID-19, please let's make it go away. But if it doesn't, um, yes, we, um, as a network of schools, uh, BASIS got up and running on distance learning very quickly. Um, we've been on distance learning since the beginning of March. Uh, the Texas schools are still open. The Arizona schools, for the most part, closed last week. Um, so we, we got a lot of experience with um, the distance learning. Um, we are really hoping that we don't have to do it, but if we do, we are ready. Um, we have uh, several options of what we can do. Um, we could go you know, back to school as normal. We could go on some kind of different schedule, or we could be um, fully distance learning. I think the next month will tell us, um, but we are prepared in any eventuality. So, um, particularly, you know, opening a new school, um, a little difficult um, to do distance learning with, with kids that we've not taught before, but um, we know that we can make it happen. Okay. Um, as you know, uh, what is the, where is the school being built? Okay. Um, we're not building a, a campus right now. We are uh, leasing space in Crestview. Um, for this opening of a K-4. It is our intent to um, have perhaps three campuses in uh, Austin that are K-12. And so we'll open at K-4. We will open another campus in uh, the 21-22 school year that um, will, uh, as the kids age out of our campus, they will go there. And we've committed to having that campus within um, five miles of the Crestview campus. So the Crestview campus is on the corner of Woodrow and Dartmouth in Crestview. We are leasing space from a church there, um, but it is a, a, a school building that has been used as a school in the past. Uh, we're doing some updating and, and uh, cleaning up and we will start out at that site. So um, Amanda also asked, you know, what does distance learning look like for us? Um, it took a variety of um, uh, methods because we go from kindergarten through 12th grade. So, you know, depending on the ability of the children, um, we either put uh, packets online um, that the kids would complete, in, particularly in the very younger grades, um, and um, then moved all the way up to on uh, uh, live classes uh, via Microsoft Teams. Um, we did a lot of Zoom work with the kids, so it was a variety of, of different ways. Um, so the kids, we, we graded it all, the kids would turn in work, and we kept the same uh, rigor that we have in when we had uh, school in person. Uh, to the Patels, I, we don't have a location yet for the third location. Um, we want to get this second one open first. And I'm sure that you all know how tough real estate is in the Austin area. Um, but we, we want to we really want to keep that, um, keep Austin as a, a great market for us. We started out in San Antonio with one school. There's now going to be four schools in San Antonio. So we'd like to do kind of the same thing as uh, in Austin, but it takes time. So the first school opened in San Antonio in 2013, and we're opening the fourth this coming August. So. I don't know where that third one is going to be yet. Um, what else? Let's just talk, I'll talk about some things. Maybe it'll trigger some questions. Um, I did say that we have a two teacher model and that starts in kindergarten and goes through fourth grade. 
Um, and what that means is that we have in kindergarten, we have a, a lead kindergarten teacher and what we call a teaching fellow, um, who is typically someone who uh, might be fresh out of school, uh, getting some experience that we can then move into that lead teacher role, but both of them teach in the classroom. So between the two teachers, they decide who's gonna teach which subjects, um, and then they work on the lesson plans and, and that together. Um, in first through third grade, um, we have what we call a learning expert teacher and a subject expert teacher. Um, and the learning expert teacher is with the students all day um, because starting in first grade, our students uh, change classes. So they go to the subject teacher. And then the subject teacher and the learning teacher work together to co-teach in those, in those classrooms. So it's a, it's a great model. Um, it works really well. It allows us to know each and every child individually and to meet that, that child where they are. Another question, how does your curriculum challenge students or help students that may be a bit behind? Great question because I happen to think that that is one of the things that BASIS does best. Um, I know in the schools that I have led, I always tell my teachers that they're accountable for, for every little butt in every seat. Um, and that's really where we come from. Um, we want to teach to the individual child. Um, we want those kids to be unique. So if a child can go faster than the class, then we, we make sure that that child is being challenged that way. Um, a, an example that I like to give is uh, when I had the campus in Brooklyn, I had a, just a very, very smart little girl that was in fourth grade, but she could do seventh grade math. So we put her in a seventh grade math class. Um, we will find ways to challenge children because when children are not challenged, they are, um, they are, become unruly <laughs> and bored. The same thing with kids that may be behind. So it is our responsibility as teachers to bring, that stu bring those students up to um, their potential. So we intervene on both ends of the spectrum and in the middle um, to make sure that kids are getting everything that they need. Um, is, we don't test to place children, um, but we do a lot of assessing. Um, so the question is, do we, we test kids to place them? No, we don't. Um, it's the teacher's responsibilities and my responsibility to know where each one of those kids are and to know which kids need more challenge and to know which kids need more help. We do do a lot of assessments um, and we, we compare ourselves against our own curriculum. We compare ourselves against national norms. Um, so we do um, a lot of, uh, as well as against the, um, uh, the curriculum that the teachers are, are teaching. So for instance, in, in math, you know, starting in kindergarten, they will have you know, a math fact test uh, almost weekly, okay? Um, is there any plan for a bus service is the question. Uh, no, um, we are a charter school. And as a charter school, we're, we are a public school, but as a charter school, we do not get the same amount of funding as your traditional public schools. And therefore, uh, bus service is really just outside of what we can provide. Um, what we do do is once we have a parent organization on each campus that's called the Boosters, and one of the things that they typically do is to, um, arrange uh, carpools. Um, so once everybody kind of gets up and, and running, we can um, kind of match by zip codes and that kind of thing um, to get carpools going. And that works really, really well, but no, no buses. How do teachers communicate with parents? Um, often and in depth. Um, we use a, uh, online platform called Parent Square. And our goal is to never have, for you never to be surprised 
uh, by how your child is doing, whether your child is doing really well or maybe your child is struggling. So um, the teachers will email you. Um, the teachers will write notes to you in um, what we call the CJ it's a communication journal. Start this in kindergarten. The kids write their homework down in this. It's a planner. Uh, the teachers may send you uh, short uh, information in the CJ, um, as well as you as parents can email the teachers at any time and make an appointment with them to come in and talk about your child. Um, we don't do you know, day, uh, a day-long teacher conference. You can come in at any time and meet with your, your uh, child's teachers about how they're doing. Um, are there any specific admission requirements or admissions first come, first serve? Um, yes, we went through an open enrollment period that, um, that ended. Um, and now we are in first come, first serve. So I encourage you to, um, if you're interested in applying, to do so quickly at enrollbasis.com. And I'll put that up again at the end. Um, and no, there are no admissions requirements. We, again, are, are a public school. Um, we take all comers. And um, it really makes it interesting because Look at kindergarten. In kindergarten, we take in, we, we will have students who have never been to school, never went to preschool, and we'll have kindergartners who have, you know, done very well in some kind of preschool program and might be reading chapter books by the time. And we are able to deal with that wide range uh, of experiences and abilities. So um, please do uh, sign up to enroll as, as quickly as possible. Um, homework. BASIS does believe in homework. Um, and we start with about 15 to 20 minutes in kindergarten and go up about 15 minutes for every grade um, up through um, the uh, primary school. Once you get into the middle school and the high school, it will be um, a little different and it will be um, pretty strenuous, the, the homework requirements. Teacher qualifications different from state public schools. Um, as a charter school, again, we can set our own qualifications. Um, and so, yes, we do have, um, our teachers are not required to have a teaching certificate. We teach them how to teach the basis way. Um, in the primary school, however, I can tell you that the vast majority of our teachers have an elementary education um, degree, uh, whether or not they have a state certification. Um, and we really like to have that um, elementary education in the primary school because the pedagogy for our littlest ones is um, needs to be learned. Um, so yes, Becoming a teacher for basis is a pretty rigorous process. Um, and in normal times, we even require a what we call it a, a, a teaching demo, where we would put that candidate in front of live children um, and have them teach a part of a, of a lesson. In the COVID world that we live in right now, what we have been doing is asking teachers to give us videos of them teaching, whether it be a real lesson or one that um, they could, um, you know, kind of dramatize and make uh, make that the demo. So um, we are looking for people who love children, who want to help children to love learning, who have a passion for particularly our littlest ones, and. Um, we usually get about um, four times the applications that we have um, uh, positions for. So um, BASIS is a very sought after organization to teach in as well as for our education. So how do we set behavior expectations is the question. Um, that will happen early on in the school year. And, and continue throughout the school year. So the first 
first few days of school, the teachers will work with the children um, to understand what our expectations are and to involve them in building those expectations. I always love it when I walk into a classroom and the class has put up their uh, their behavior uh, expectations uh, up on a on a poster, um, and you can always tell when the kids have been involved in those expectations. Um, but yes, we set those very clearly. The behavior monitoring, if you will, the classroom management is done primarily by the two teachers that are in the classroom. If the behavior issues become chronic. Um, then we can involve our, our director of primary uh, programs and our dean. And if there's something behind that behavior, then we would involve our uh, special ed department to see if there's something that is causing the behavior. We, are, um, we don't have a, a rule book that says if a child does this, the consequences are, are this. We, work with each individual child again to make sure that the consequences fit the crime, if you will, and that we can make the behavior go away. Um, school hours and, and after school programs. Um, great questions. Um, we're still working on our schedule, um, but school will start sometime probably between 7.45 and 8 o'clock in, uh, in the morning and then in somewhere between 3.15 and 3.45. We open the campus at seven o'clock. So um, you can drop your kids off as early as seven. They will be supervised, but it's unstructured time. Kids use it to eat their breakfast. They use it to play. They use it to finish homework if they haven't done it. They use it to socialize. And then their um, teacher will gather them uh, about 10 to 15 minutes before class starts. They'll go up to their uh, cubbies, get their things for their class, and go to class. Um, school will end, as I said, somewhere between 3.15 and 3.45. However, um, the early bird program, which is the 7 o'clock program, is free. We do have a fee-based program for after school and it goes from dismissal until 6 p.m. And during that time, your kids will have time for a snack. They will have time to do their homework with teachers monitoring them and helping them with that homework. And they will have free time or recess kinds of time uh, until you come and get them. And you can come and get them at, at any time, you know, whatever works for you up till six o'clock. Um, in addition, and that is fee-based, and we're looking at probably about $200 a month. Um, we will also, probably starting in September, we will have um, clubs and activities after school, uh, extracurricular kinds of things. Um, and it can be a wide variety of, um, of options based on our, our teachers teach those after school clubs and activities. Um, and we have teachers, coming that are have a range of passions. Um, we have a teacher coming who um, has spent the last couple of years um, teaching cooking to um, children. We have another um, teacher whose uh, major is elementary education and her minor is dance and she wants to start some kind of dance. So we've got a lot of things going on um, that we will do after school. Um, are there any computer or language classes offered during school? Um, so let, I'm going to start with the language. In our um, kindergarten through fourth grade, the language that we teach is Mandarin. And there's a reason why we teach Mandarin. It's not so much that um, a billion or so people speak it, but we, we believe that Mandarin gives us some skills. Um, that we are desperately needed with the little ones. It's great for listening skills because it's very tonal. It's great for fine motor skills because as the students learn to write the characters, they have to be very precise. Um, so our kids learn to speak, write, and read Mandarin. It also, Mandarin is the one language that uses the same part of the brain as a uh, creative problem solving. And we want to graduate kids that can uh, solve problems, 
And so if we start working that muscle, that part of the muscle, uh, starting in kindergarten, um, we think that there, there's some benefit of that. In, fourth, in fifth and sixth grade, we switch to Latin. And then in seventh grade, our kids um, can learn, uh, the, have a choice. Um, computer classes, so we do do as an extracurricular um, in many, on many campuses, if we have a teacher, we'll do coding or computer classes. We do not use um, computers in the classroom um, just every day. If the teacher has a strong reason to bring computers into the classroom, we have a laptop cart and it's, it's brought in um, for that particular lesson. Um, in our older grades, we are starting to use some uh, tablet applications that we have built ourselves, but that is only starting at about fifth grade. It will maybe uh, come down to the younger grades in, in a few years, but right now, and it's only uh, a math program. So, um, so I hope that helps with that. Uh, a flavor of what differentiates basis from state schools, compare strengths and weakness, is STEM focus the primary di differentiator? Um, no, we are a liberal arts school that has a bit of a STEM focus. Um, so um, I wouldn't say that we are a STEM school. What differentiates us from, um, I think you mean traditional public schools, when you say state schools, is our curriculum. So as a charter school, we are able to build our own curriculum. And we were founded on the basis, if you will, that um, kids can do more than the traditional public schools um, believe. And so we, and we prove that every day. We have kids, you know, coming to us that maybe didn't do well in a traditional public school and, and soar in our, in our uh, curriculum. So our curriculum, first of all, it we tend to teach about a year ahead. Um, and this is not a problem for the kids. Um, we Because we do pay attention to each and every child, we can move them through that uh, curriculum um, with some ease. Um, we are constantly innovating in our curriculum. Um, and we involve the people who are actually using the curriculum, our teachers, in the development of it. So in, in most cases, uh, depending on what's, um, not depending, but in all the states that we are in, our curriculum um, standards far exceed those state standards. Um, we, in Texas, there's a couple of things like Texas history, that we weave into our um, into our curriculum because it's required, but our curriculum is um, more advanced and more um, rigorous than the state curriculum. Um, if students are not making good grades, are they held back? Can parents ask for a student to be held back before school starts? So the two two separate issues there, but. Um, if a child is not making good grades, the, um, and we can define that for you, a child that is not passing is, is likely uh, what we're talking about. We will put that child first on a very um, rigorous uh, academic support program. And that will look different for each child, but it could involve things like having, um, someone who is not one of his or her regular teachers be an academic advisor. That could include um, meetings with our director or our deans on a weekly basis. Um, it can include, um, it will certainly include involving the parents so that you know that your child is struggling and we will give you things that you can do to help. We don't like to hold children back but we do have a policy that says if they, um, if they do not pass any of their core academic classes, they can either do a summer packet um, that will be graded and tested um, to try and get that grade up, or they will be held back. Um, 
if you are thinking, if your question says, can parents ask for a student to be held back before school starts? If you're thinking that your child did not get the, uh, the skills and abilities that they needed in the grade that they just finished, that's a conversation that we would have and we would make a decision together. Many times what I like to do is to start the child out in the appropriate grade, see how they do under our system with our teachers. If it's not working, then we meet and we come up with a, a, a different plan. And it might be that, um, you know, that child does go back to the, to the previous grade. But we really want to work with kids from where they are and get them to where they need to be. Are the kids required to take the state uh, aptitude tests? I think you mean the standardized tests that are given once a year um, in Texas, I think it's called the STAR. Um, yes, our kids take the standardized tests in every state that we are in. Right now we're in Arizona, uh, DC, Louisiana, Texas, um, and we do give those tests. However, our kids do very, very well on those. In addition, um, starting in third grade, we give uh, our kids a standardized international test that um, pits our kids against um, 30 countries. Um, and again, our kids come out on top. So you'll, you'll see a lot of data about how our kids are doing. Uh, lunch, uh, kids bring their own lunch. Um, and we ask that the parents, um, you know, pack snacks um, because kids, learning is hard work and the kids get very hungry. Um, and so we ask you to, um, you know, pack a lot of food. Now, again, when the boosters get up and running, one of the things that most of our booster uh, organizations do is to um, provide some kind of hot lunch program, if you will. So in the campus that I'm just coming from, we had it for five days and it was things like Culver's, pizza, um, that kind of thing that you can pre-order and then parents come in and distribute that um, during the lunch period. Um, we typically, the kids will have about 25 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes for lunch, just depends on what we can work in the schedule and that, and we have adults monitoring. Um, what I have liked to do on my campuses is to have the first five to seven minutes of that lunch period be silent and eating time. Um, because if we don't do that, um, then we find that kids are taking full lunch boxes home and, and don't have the fuel to make the rest of the day. So we do, um, we do make sure that they are eating. Um, we make sure that um, any child that has um, allergies is removed from um, the mainstream. So, uh, yes. Um, let's see. Can they have water at their desk? Yes, absolutely. Um, our kids, we, we ask that you um, provide them with a water bottle, um, one like like this kind of thing, not a um, not the bottles that you get from Costco because those end up being spilled, but a real water bottle and um, they can refill those during the day. And yes, we always want the kids to have water. It gets hot in Texas. Let's see. You guys are asking great questions, and having fun. Okay, uh, PE, is PE incorporated into the curriculum? Time to exercise and be out in the sun, yes. So primary kids have PE every day. Um, we have a great PE teacher that is coming and our, our PE classes are skill building. So they will learn um, some of the skills that they need for when they get older you know, being able to do basketball or soccer or those kinds of things, as well as team and, and collaboration uh, with the PE uh, curriculum. We do a lot of cross-curricular kinds of things. So it might be that um, the kids will be using some math that they learned 
um, during PE. So yes, in addition to PE, um, all the primary kids will have at least two recesses a day. Some of the grades will have more than that, which is just free time to, um, to get out and run and play in the sun. Additionally, um, uh, our kids also um, take some other cool specials classes, if you will, PEs in included in that. They will take music, they will take visual arts, they will take engineering, and they will take performing arts. So um, a good cross liberal arts kind of education in all of those areas. Um, how many different class groups for each grade level? Um, once we are at full enrollment, we will know that, but it will likely be two to three. Um, fourth grade might be a little, uh, we might only have one fourth grade class, um, but everything else will be more than likely two to three. Um, does BASIS work with any learning abroad programs? Um, not at the primary level but we do um, at the high school level, um, both with um, our students going overseas, as well as bringing um, students here. We do, we, um, do have affiliation um, with, there are four international, um, no, five, six uh, international schools that are affiliated with BASIS, one in Thailand, uh, one in Prague, and three or four in China. Um, they are operated separately, um, but they all carry the basis name. So that's a, another opportunity. Uh, is the school year and holidays in sync with the public schools? Um, not totally, um, but start and end is. Um, we do a fall break um, that I'm not sure that the Texas schools do. Um, we do about two weeks at, um, in the winter uh, around the holidays. Uh, we do a spring break as well as various other um, day or two day uh, events. We get this question all the time. I, I love it. Um, if a, if a, a fourth grader has not learned Mandarin, um, can they take an after school class to learn it? No, we will teach them. Um, it is it is an, it's one of the things that continually amazes me as I have been at BASIS is how fast kids pick up Mandarin. Um, and the way that we teach it um, uh, helps them to do that. Adults, I, you know, I've been around BASIS for almost eight years now and I can say hello in Mandarin. Um, but the kids pick it up very quickly. So not to worry about that if your fourth grader is coming in Remember that all the fourth graders are coming in not having spoken Mandarin. And so we'll start with the basics and they will learn it very quickly. I often hear from parents kind of mid-year, my, my two kids, you know, if they have two kids, they're sitting in the back seat, you know, having a conversation in Mandarin. And I don't know what they're talking about. And I'm gonna tell you, neither do I, but they, they will tell you. Um, by fourth grade, you know, if kids have been with us, since kindergarten, um, they can uh, walk into a Chinese restaurant and have a conversation. So kids pick it up very qu quickly. Don't worry about um, don't worry about that. We will make it happen. Melissa asks, "What is a fall break?" It's a week off that we take in the fall, uh, usually around October, um, so that um, we start in the middle of August, and we want to make sure that. Um, the kids have a have a break and the teachers have a break uh, around October. Um, I'm not looking at our calendar, so I'm not sure. Wait, I might be able to tell you when our fall break is for Austin. We start school on the fall break. Um, this coming year will be October 9th through October 12th. Oh, I wish there was a pre-K program in the future to be offered. Um, no, uh, one, of the, one of the issues with being a charter school is that um, we can't charge tuition and pre-K programs um, 
you know, really are based on tuition. So we are looking uh, all over for ways to do that. Um, uh, we are starting a pre-K program in uh, Arizona, but under um, a different name. So, yep. Uh, we would all love to have the pre-K program. That's sort of the way that the primary program started. We used to start our schools at fifth grade. And we would spend all of fifth grade kind of basicizing, if you will, the students. And we said, why don't we just kind of grow our own? And so that's what we started to do. The first uh, primary school opened in Tucson um, uh, six years ago. I had to think, because uh, my granddaughter was one of the first um, students in that program, and she's now going into seventh grade, so six years ago. And now most of the schools that we are opening are primaries. And then we take the primaries that feed into middle and high schools. If basis is not a good foot fit for some reason, would you be able to switch back to a public school? Um, not really sure how the enrollment works for a charter. Um, absolutely. Um, and I can tell you that the public schools would be very happy to have kids from basis. Um, sometimes, um, you know, parents make the decision to move their child out of a basic school for whatever reason um, and and to switch them back to public school or maybe it's a relocation for whatever reason it is yes um, they would be accepted back into their neighborhood school it wouldn't make any any difference that they had been at basis i can tell you that a lot of our children that um, do decide to leave for what for whatever reason um, if they do go back to the public school, they are um, ahead when they do that. Do you recommend the after school program for busy working parents? Is there a way to guarantee a student is working on homework during that time? I do. Um, I think our, our late bird program, as we call it, is, is one of the best things about basis. And yes. Um, uh, whereas I can't guarantee, we do everything within our power to get the kids working on their homework. And as I said, we have teachers in the classrooms um, during that period of time. Now, the entire time is not spent on homework. That wouldn't be fair to the kids. They've just spent you know, eight hours in school. But we do set aside time for them to, to um, either get their homework done or at minimum to start on it. Kids will be kids sometimes and they might, you know, say I'm not, I don't want to do it, that kind of thing. We will work with that as a, as a behavioral issue, but we do absolutely. Um, that's why we have this program for busy working parents um, to get the kids doing their homework. Um, and their homework is always, um, practice for something they've learned in class that day. And so we don't expect that when, you know, if they don't get it done and they come home, that you are sitting with them and going over each problem. We would much prefer that you, you know, get your child into the habit of doing their homework on their own with you just kind of overlooking it, because that's what our teachers use to know whether or not what they taught um, got through. Um, so if, to your next question, if parents do not know the answer to the homework uh, questions, uh, no, if the kids don't know, if the parents don't know, we would rather you skip that question, uh, send it in the next day, um, and the teachers go over that homework, and that, that tells them what they need to reteach, uh, or if that child needs some help. Um, we can always tell you know, when the parents have really helped with, with that homework, the homework is practice for what they've learned. It's not a gotcha. It's not, we don't expect it to come back perfect. Uh, we want to know what the student knows and what they don't know. Um, so that, that's, you know, and it will never be, you know, kind of busy work. It will always be something of value. Uh, Explain how the charter funding works in comparison to public schools and talk about the services that BASIS has to forego to work with the funding. 
Um, you know, I, coming from Arizona, I'm not sure how the funding works in, um, in Texas, but I know that in Arizona, it's about 75, somewhere 70 to 75%. That's where the majority of our schools are. Um, to what a traditional public school would, would get. The main things that we forego are things like a hot lunch program that is very, very expensive um, and busing. We make everything else work within that budget, including how we pay our teachers, making sure we have the right curricular materials. Um, so we're not really foregoing anything other than those nice to haves like transportation and a hot lunch program. Um, so um, I'm I'm not really sure what the what the funding is in Texas. It could even be a little bit higher uh, than what it is in Arizona. Um, but most charter schools are somewhere um, 25 to 30 percent less than um, uh, the traditional public schools. Yes, we do teach handwriting. Um, starting in kindergarten and then cursive starts in third grade um, and we do teach cursive. There is not a school supply list yet. Um, we will put one together um, a little bit closer uh, to the middle of July, early August, just because um, the teachers put together the supply list. And so until the teachers are uh, in the building and on, on board, they will put that list together. Um, it will be the normal things that you would see in a primary school, the crayons, the pencils, um, some composition books, and, the, and those kinds of things. Nothing too strenuous. Amanda, I'm so glad you're here. And I'm going to say this wrong, Bridges Patel. Try that. Um, you guys are asking some great questions. So yes, we will give you a school supply list. A, a question that we often get um, that you haven't come up with yet is um, uniforms. We do not require uniforms. We want the kids to, um, <laughs> I'm laughing at Amanda's question. She says she has three kids. It's a lot of work. Um, and I, I understand that. I understand that. Um, I had 540 in my last campus. Um, at least I didn't have to take them all home. So, um, yeah, we um, want the kids to be individual so they can wear whatever they want. We try to avoid things like flip-flops because they do have PE every day. Um, so, but, you know, they can wear what they want. Colored hair is fine. I have seen every color of the rainbow. Hats are fine. Um, you know, we want the kids to, you know, dress appropriately. So a marijuana leaf on a t-shirt is probably not something something we would have a conversation about, but past that, um, the kids are free to wear. And we will have lots of spirit weeks um, where the kids can dress up in, in, uh, in costume kinds of things. Um, so yes, uh, we want these children to be individuals um, and to show their spirit. You are quite welcome. Um, if there's anything else that you um, didn't get to ask this time, uh, somebody's dropping off. And um, please, uh, you can go to our website and you'll find my email address there and just drop me an email and I'll be happy to you know, call you back or answer you on email. Does PE require a uh, clothes change? No, it does not. So no uniforms for PE, no, um, they don't need to change their clothes um, and don't have time to do that, quite frankly. Um, so uh, that's why we ask, you know, not to send the kids in, in flip-flops so they don't even have to change their shoes for PE. Um, there is not a nurse on campus. What we have on campus is what we call a health coordinator. 
those uh, that person typically does have some kind of medical background. Um, all teachers and staff uh, on campus uh, are CPR and uh, first aid trained. Um, we have EpiPens. The nurse, the, the health coordinator on campus um, will distribute medicine if you have a prescription for it and you fill out a form. So if your child needs to take medication a couple of times a day, they make sure that happens. They hand out a lot of ice packs and band-aids, um, but we're all trained and that, that person um, also is trained to, to not hesitate to call 911 if necessary. Um, we, we, particularly in kindergarten and first, yes, we ask that you do bring a change of clothes in case of spill accidents, um, <laughs> um, et cetera. Yes, thank you, Amanda. Um, and we also keep, um, we ask for donations from the parents because the health coordinator will keep a supply of pants and underwear and socks and uh, yes, Amanda, Ella, yes, paint, yeah, uh -huh, that's right. That's mostly what happens. Um, uh, in case something like paint gets spilled on clothes and, and the child doesn't have. So we always have a, you know, extra sets of clothes when you're talking about a primary, um, lots of accidents happen, whether it's paint or something else. So absolutely. Um, but uh, kindergartners, first grade, keep, um, keep a change of clothes in their cubbies. Anything else? We're just about at the hour mark. Are parents welcome for lunch with the kids? That's a reason why you want to join the boosters. Um, so because we do have um, what we have, our campuses are pretty locked down and we don't have parents on campus for unless there's a very specific reason. So um, sometimes the, the people that sign up for the boosters, um, they will at least see their child at lunchtime, um, see them, you know, interacting with, with their their kids, um, but uh, we we don't necessarily want you to come in and have lunch with the kids. It's their time to kind of socialize. We try not, if it's an emergency, you just totally forgot to give your child lunch, um, then lunch can be delivered via Uber. The issue is that when you deliver lunch via Uber, someone has to deliver that lunch to the child. And so, and that's very difficult for our front office people. So um, typically what will happen is if you forgot lunch, we will have something on campus that we can give that child. Um, you may be charged for it, but um, we try to avoid the delivery of lunch um, because if the front office can't get it to the child by lunchtime, then then we have a problem. Um, birthday cupcakes. Um, what we, what I've done on my campuses um, is that I have allowed birthday cupcakes as long as they are store bought so that we can see the ingredients um, so that we can be careful with our children that have allergies. But so what we liked, what we prefer to do is that you, do something um, other than uh, other than that for birthday parties, and we will celebrate their birthday. Um, but you know, little trinkets, uh, kids love pencils and that kind of thing. But if you want to do birthday cupcakes, we will do birthday cupcakes as long as they are store bought. Um, you for any charges that you have. Um, you will go through Smart for Charters, which is a third party that processes all of that for us. Michelle, there's no nurse and the child needs medications. Are the parents required to go to the school and administer it or can the staff? No, the staff will administer it. We have a form that you will fill out and the health coordinator 
um, will uh, make sure that that child gets that medication. The medication has to be delivered to the school um, uh, in the prescription bottle that it's prescribed. Um, if it's over-the-counter medication, um, you again have to give us permission to give that child the over written permission to give that give your child those medications. Um, we deal with kids that have diabetes. We deal with kids that have um, asthma uh, or you know other kinds of medication, and we are we are make sure that they get them on time. Um, so is there a curriculum outline for each grade level so we know what they should know before school? Um, we have curriculum outlines. Um, you will see them after you are enrolled during a curriculum night um, when we'll go over it with you. Don't worry about what they should know before school. Um, uh, we will figure that out and we will get them to where they need to be. Um, looking for stuff to review for summer. That's one of the things I think that you'll like about BASIS is we don't ask the kids to do much um, over the summer. Uh, we, our curriculum is rigorous. We teach a, uh, a year ahead. And so we don't assign like reading lists and that kind of things um, over, over the summer. Um, now, some of the teachers, you know, will will give you some ideas of things that you can do, but um, we we give the kids the summer off. The curriculum night that I was talking about will happen after school starts, and we'll give you information about that. That's when you'll get um, the um, syllabus for each class, um, as well as to understand, you know, where the teachers are going. So it's something. Um, that we like to do and that all the states require that we do. So you'll you'll know um, what your kids are learning. Plus you will have each day the communication journal where um, the students are putting their homework for that night. So, you know, if you follow along and we ask you that you at least initial that um, CJ every day, um, it's a good way that your kids can't tell you that they didn't have any homework. Um, because you can look in their CJ and find out that they did. Okay, good discussion. Enjoyed it. Um, I love working with the primary. Um, I am, um, that's been kind of my specialty as I've grown in basis. Um, and so I'm very, very much looking forward to um, starting this new primary in a new market being Austin um, with all you great people. So I hope that you will uh, apply. Um, go to enrollbasis.com and put up, I think I can put up another slide here. If my screen will let me share, but I have to turn this off. All this technology that we've learned because of the coronavirus. Well, there we go. So if you can see that, um, that's got all the information on it, including my um, my uh, email address. Um, I am happy to talk to you as long as you want to talk. Is there going to be another coffee night? Um, yes, they are all on our website. So if you go to um, basisaustinprimary.org, um, you can sign up for, we do info sessions and coffee nights. Um, so please sign up and we can keep going, Amanda. We can keep going. All right. Okay. I appreciate you taking time out of your evening to um, be with me. And um, I look forward to, ah, so I just got a, a message. So uh, in fact, um, we will be in Austin um, for a in-person um, visit to talk about what the options are, uh, you know, and the fact that we are ready for anything. Um, you'll get information, but it will be uh, June 11th 
at 6.30 and location to be determined. Um, we will let you all know uh, when that's coming. It will be myself and our CEO um, talking about basis and talking about our preparation uh, given the um, given COVID. Uh, Michelle, yes, our sessions are recorded and they are on our website. So if you scroll down, once you get to our website, if you scroll down, you will find um, many of the recorded sessions. And hopefully you might be able to uh, join us uh, in person on the 11th of June at 6.30. Um, and we'll let you know where we've got to find a, a location for that meeting. So, all right. I Again, I appreciate you coming. I appreciate your great questions. Um, and I hope that you will um, join us uh, at Basis Austin Primary. Um, we start school August 17th. I hope you will be there. We'll talk to you soon. Please email me if you have any questions.